Hi guys, Hamish here, back with a little bit more of Diesel Railcar Simulator. Um, I took a first look video of this um, last week, and um, we took the class 1 to 117 I think it was. Um, well this is a different one, this is the class 112 if I'm correct. Um, and I thought I'd take this for a drive just because... Um, we can just to show off the difference between them. Uh, so let's get started here. Let's actually, when we remove that, we'll start the engines first. Get that going. So I think actually in real startup procedure, you should have that on full when starting the engines, but it doesn't appear to do anything here. And we've got the left hand and the right hand going. Let's get into gear heard the buzzer. We can reply back of course. And if we're in forwards, chuck that down to first. We've got the signal. Let's release the brake, get going, and we can talk on the way. Okay, we're slowly moving. It's taking a little while. Those brakes take a quite a long time to release it seems. Anyway, we are off. We've got a 10 mile an hour limit just here. So I'll put that into fourth. Um, I'll actually link in the description uh, where you can find the old British Rail videos which told you how to drive these things. They're actually quite interesting. Uh, they're worth a watch if you've got the time. There's the signal box. Anyone in there? No, doesn't look like it. Okay. I think we'll probably speed up a little bit now. Interesting, we can actually pull that away in second gear for about 10 miles an hour, which is nice. It seems to be running quite smoothly, which is good. But you can tell already that this does look uh, quite a bit different to the other one we were driving. And they all tend to look a little bit different. But the controls are all effectively the same thing. You've got your power, your gear selection, and your director direction selection there with the paddle. or the, um, I believe it's actually got a different name. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, and you've got your brake there. I don't think this handbrake actually works here. In reality, that spins around um, to put the handbrake on. I don't think that works. Now, let's have a look. What's our timetable looking like? Um, it's uh, quite an intense short run, this one. So we've got quite a few stops in quick succession. By the looks of it, we've got one at 35. So it's, that is in basically three minutes two minutes even actually. Uh, so we have to be on the ball with this one. But I thought it'd be good to just uh, go out and have a little run in one of these different units. It's four cars this time. You can tell it looks a little bit different. There is one which is quite different to the rest of them. Um, uh, I've forgotten which class. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it up on screen now. But it's different in that it's uh, the drive the driving cab is completely different. It's uh, and one end is like this, and one end is sort of built in with a corridor connection, right here. So that's quite different to drive. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any scenarios for that that were under about uh, well that were under about half well no an hour sorry. So I thought well probably won't record that one not just yet anyway. I find it quite difficult to judge the distances in this game. I'm not quite sure why. Um, maybe just because I'm not quite used to it. A habit of either coming in too fast to the station or too slow. As I think I might have done just here. Where is it? Where is it hiding? It's there. It might be the fact that you never really get very fast in these things. 
you know, you know fast is about, <laughs> it seems fast when you're doing 60, but it doesn't take you that long to slow down from that speed. And if you're doing 60, you don't need to drop a huge amount of speed to enter the platform at a sort of a safe speed. It's funny, the lighting's doing its thing again. I generally find if I enter a platform at 30 miles an hour, I should be able to stop in time. And I think they want us to stop at the end, but I'm not going to do that. Seems a stupid place to stop. <laughs> there we go. On time as well, which is good. Have a look out the window. Oh, those those uh, god rays are <laughs> quite um, are quite overpowering, aren't they? It would be quite nice if you could get out and walk around, but I understand why not. Requires a lot more work on the part of the developing the map. You don't really need to. Um, it would be quite nice if you could maybe get out and use the local start stop on these things, which they've got for the engines. That'd be quite cool. Or even just to open the door here, which doesn't exist, and walk through. Or even open the window, that'd be nice. Uh, right, where are we? Key is R to get into the gear. Still not quite remembered it because it is a little bit different to Railworks. Come on, we can do it. There we go. Check our train out of the platform, shall we? Oh, hold on. That wasn't meant to happen. I want to look at the back. So I just realised it was actually four coaches. And was thinking, well, actually... Did we have the rearmost coach in the platform? I wasn't quite sure. This is quite nice, sticking your head out the window. <laughs> right, let, let's get back in the seat, shall we? Before we, before we cause an accident. Now our next stop again, very soon. It's in just a few minutes, we've got about three minutes before we end up there. I was looking at the, um, the route editor stuff on YouTube, the uh, developers put a few videos on how that works and it looks at the mo a lot of this stuff is actually auto-generated so you don't actually have to you know, plonk each building here down on your own instead it's a system where you just sort of define an area where you want roads or whatever and it sort of builds them itself which is quite nice um, because that's one, one quite time-consuming element of making a route which I've found is you know, putting in roads and stuff, getting that stuff right <laughs> and looking good um, can take quite a lot of effort and it's the sort of thing that could be automated with an algorithm but that's quite nice to see because the one, the one concern with that is that everything ends up looking the same um, so hopefully there is going to be the option for you to go in and place these things on your own manually instead of, you know, following along with the, the algorithm but we'll see how it, we'll see what happens uh, we'll see how it turns out. Just realised we've got to stop here. Too busy blathering. One thing they have said though is that, um, what he has said, it's only one developer, is that you won't initially be able to insert your own objects um, into the game, but it is something that they plan for later releases, so that'll be quite nice when that happens. Oh, the lighting is doing its thing again. I'm not a fan of that. I wonder why it does it. 
currently running this in DirectX mode, which might explain why. No, DirectX 12. Perhaps if I ran it in 11, because it's got two options, it might work a bit better, but I'm not sure. Right, this time I'm going to try and make sure we get everything in the platform. I'll we'll run this all the way up to the end. If we can, we'll really look out the window and see, shall we? I think everything's in the platform? Yeah. Oh. Apply the brakes then. Job done. I wish these guys would get on, you know? You know, do you not want to... You're just standing there? Looking at it? You know, mate, mate, you could get on. Alright, okay. <laughs> That'd be something nice to see anyway, if they, they actually did walk around and get on. Also, it'd be nice to see lights that work on the front. That'd be quite good. I guess perhaps if we get a day-night cycle, that might be something that comes up. See, just there, I was talking about the auto-generated uh, nature of the scenery. It's the same with bridges and whatnot. And that, that there is just one of those things that happens with auto-gen stuff, is it's going to do stuff like that. Clearly, that should be another arch, if you know what I mean, but it's just too short, so it's shrunk it down. It doesn't look amazing, so... I mean, obviously, there's ways you could fix it with the algorithm, or if you could place these things manually. Anyway. Let's get going, shall we? What is that down there? Oh, it's the door handle. <laughs> I was like, is it a can or something? Oh, these brakes take a while to release. I wouldn't want to miss that down to 40, it's a bit of a lumpy track around here. Anyway, let's get back up to speed, shall we? We've got two more stops left. This little journey. I will say, it doesn't seem terribly different to the other unit. Um, the sounds seem pretty similar. And maybe that's true. Maybe the sounds really were that similar. I don't know. I think it was the sounds are, like I said before, they aren't bad. Um, just maybe they're a bit the same, recycled. A bit of a Dovetail Games <laughs> thing going on there, but it makes sense if there's one person developing this, you're not going to go out and record all of those units. Hmm. <laughs> I thought that was set against me, actually. I was ready to release power. The one thing I, thing I said last time was how much the cab swayed about, and apparently they do actually sway about quite a lot in real life, uh, and I guess I never knew because I've never been on them. But apparently that was actually quite common, for them to sort of sway about like this, sort of all over the place. So that's quite interesting to know. Uh, actually, I probably can go a little bit faster here. I notice we've got a 40 limit coming up in the future. There's another bridge thing going on there. I would coast it down to that 40 limit. And we've got 25 coming up in the future as well. Just looking at the heads up display there. Oh, it's a junction. 
It'd be quite nice to have a, um, a free roam mode or something like that, where you could actually just go out and go around the network at your own will. It'd be quite cool. Okay, it's 40. <laughs> Let's ease off on the power. But yeah, it looks quite nice. I mean, it's a bit plain in places, but it's functional, I think, is a key thing. Alright, let's just start on with the braking now, just so we get down to this limit in time. I presume we're switching over to here or somewhere. Wow, look at that over there. There's another massive viaduct with a train on it. That is one of those units I'm sure I was talking about. The ones with the the connection in, in this air, middle area here. Might take a look at those for the future. Anyway, here we are. Are we going anywhere in particular? Aha! <laughs> it's not for this one, it's for that. Time to slow down, we might have to stop. Perhaps because of that train there has just gone past. So I don't see this signal that it mentions. It'll be around here somewhere. That'll be it. That one that one there, I think. Yeah, the set to danger. Oh, good view looking down here. Can you imagine building a viaduct like this? Massive. Okay, where's the signal? Oh, come on. Oh, I think that's ours there and it's cleared. But it could be this one. I think it's that one though. Nothing wrong with being cautious. Okay, that is really weird. So, I'm just sitting here. I've got the, um... My monitor is facing the window, or the, what, the window is behind my monitor. And there's this massive pole has just gone up behind the window. And I think it's them cleaning it, because it's a block of flats. <laughs> I've never seen that before. They're actually cleaning the windows with this massive pole. I was just sitting here and I was like, what is that thing? It was like some wind turbine blade had gone past. I was like, what is going on? Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> that signal's cleared. We'll keep power on, shall we? Now that was bizarre. At some point they're actually going to start cleaning this window rather than the one above. <laughs> Thankfully it's closed. <laughs> and here we are. We're on the other side this time. Platform's there. I can't look out and see if I'm in the... We're all in the platform. You have to guess that we are. Do you think we made it in? Yeah, just. <laughs> Only just. But it doesn't really matter, no one actually wants on anyway, do they? They're just going to stand there. Looks like we're actually late as well. One minute late. I mean, I was only being cautious at that signal. <laughs> right. Let's go.
think it's easier if I release the brake a bit before I apply the power. Or if once they're stopped, I guess the best thing to do is release it a little bit so that you can pull away easier. Yeah, look, there's where we were meant to stop. <laughs> can you imagine getting off on the wrong side here without looking? There's a long way, there's a long drop down to the platform on that side. You just end up standing on this wall, and you might think it was the platform. Because <laughs> it is roughly the right height. Anyway, this looks like our final destination. I think we'll just coast in to, to our final stop. Is that against me? No, nope, we've got a route to the left by the looks of it. And it's the big town. That looks quite convincing as a town just there. This side, maybe not so much for the greenery. Anyway, there's one of those things that we drove last time. Now those are different, they've got doors at every point, whereas ours has just got doors um, at certain points here. You have to get up and walk to the door here rather than having a door by your seat. Now we've got 10 mile an hour going left here. Interesting, we bend in the track. You could have, we would have thought they could have straightened that out a little bit. Now, you're supposed to coast in fourth gear, but I don't know what point you're meant to move back to neutral. I tend to do it about this sort of speed. Now the thing with these old slam door uh, units, with these doors here, is that people would actually open these doors before the before it stopped. And if you were standing on the platform here and you weren't looking, you could have someone open the door and you get knocked by this door speeding past you at you know, 10 plus miles an hour. Which is why we don't have them anymore, because it was, it was a, a health and safety thing. Anyway, let's pull in here. Oh, that was that was a <laughs> didn't have any chance to do uh, shut down the unit there. Anyway, how did we do? This is us. That's our speed there against the sort of the distance travelled, and that's the limit. So <laughs> it it was thinking, well, we should have got there. Obviously, at this point, I thought, well, I need to start braking. It seemed to be a similar story most of the way along. Anyway. Here we are, we've stopped. Um, that'll, I know that'll do, I think. We just find a... Uh. <laughs> um, okay. Well, uh, my train just disappeared. We can go and watch this one instead, we can't. <laughs> instead. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Anyway, folks, that was a look at Diesel Railcar Simulator again. Um, I hope that was... Kind of interesting, have a look at that different bit of rolling stock. I can have a look at the other two at some point as well, um, if you'd like to see that. It's just the scenarios for those seem to be a little bit longer, um, so they might not suit a video quite so well. Anyway, that is it from me. Um, this is the last video before Christmas, so I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, and I will see you all soon in the next video. Thank you, and take care.